In this video I will introduce how to solve problem 817. In this problem you have the circuit as seen here. You've got a 5 amp current source, a 4 ohm resistor, and you've got a switch that is starting out up here at position A and at T equals 0 is coming down to position B. You've got a 10 ohm resistor down here, a 0.25 Henry inductor right there, and a 0.04 farad capacitor. And our reference here is V, and we are asked to find V of T for any T greater than or equal to zero. And so as usual, we want to start out and figure out what are our initial conditions? What's going on when this was in steady state just prior to that switch changing? And so at T equals zero minus, the circuit behaves like this. We have our current source and our four ohm resistor, and then at this point, we haven't switched down to B, so really that 10 ohm resistor is just hanging out there. It has no relevance on the circuit, so we'll just leave that out. Our inductor is at steady state, so it behaves like a short. And then our capacitor is at steady state, so it will behave like an open. And so therefore, at T equals zero minus, we have no current flowing through the inductor because it's in series with this capacitor that's behaving like an open circuit. And we want to figure out, well, what's the voltage across the capacitor? Well, we can find that by looking at what is the voltage across this entire branch. And that can be found because it's in parallel with this 4 ohm resistor. And the 4 ohm resistor is going to receive all 5 amps from this current source. Because the capacitor is behaving like an open circuit over here, none of that current is going to flow through this branch. And so all 5 amps are going to flow through the 4 ohm resistor. And that leads us to understand that V at zero minus is going to be equal to 20 volts, just 5 amps times 4 ohms from Ohm's law. We also know that the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. And so our voltage at zero plus is going to equal our voltage at zero minus and still going to be this 20 volts. Likewise, the current through the inductor is not going to have a stepwise change. And so our I at zero minus is zero amps, and at zero plus we will also see zero amps. And so as we continue on with our analysis, after T equals zero, what's actually happening to this circuit? Well, at T equals zero, this switches down to B, and effectively this just becomes a source-free RLC circuit. And so we can analyze it accordingly. And so with this source-free RLC circuit, there's a couple different ways that we can analyze this. I'm going to showcase here that you can analyze it all in terms of current and just do a mesh analysis on here. So we're going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law and we're going to say, okay, the voltage dropped across the resistor is just 10 ohms times I. And then we've got the voltage dropped across the inductor. That is just L di dt. And so our L is 0.25 Henry's times di dt. And then we've got the voltage, V of T, that we're actually solving for. So this is ultimately what we want to solve for. And so that will come into play a little bit later. What I'm going to do in this solution is I'm going to put everything in terms of current. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to solve for V of T in terms of I. So let's keep going on through that way. And so in order to sub in for this V of T, what I'm going to do for this capacitor is say I of C equals C dV dt. And so here our V of T is actually going to equal 1 over C integral from 0 up through time T of I of C tau d tau. And so I've got this integral relationship here um, for my current. And so to solve I'm going to plug that back in here. And then I'm going to take the derivative so I can get rid of this integral. So here taking the derivative of I with respect to T, I get 10 ohms times di dt. And here taking the derivative, this becomes 0.25 second order derivative of I with respect to T. And then to get rid of this integral, now I've got 1 over 0.04 farads times I. One thing to note here is we could have very easily have also solved this in terms of V. And that may actually be a better approach. Honestly, I didn't even think about doing it that way until I started going through this solution video. But one thing to note, you could have left this in terms of V of T. And then over here, 
for this I, you could have plugged in C dV dt, and for the di dt, you could have plugged in C second order derivative of V with respect to T. That would have left everything in terms of V, and then you could solve accordingly. That would actually make it much easier than the rest of this solution will um, lead you to see. And so I suggest, as you're studying for the quiz, go back and try to do that in terms of V's and DV and second order derivative of V with respect to T. And it actually works out to a much cleaner solution. As you'll see, the S values will come out to be exactly the same. And so I want to show you that as we go on through here is our second order differential equation. We're going to perform a Laplace transform and we're going to get our s values here. And so in this case, this becomes just s squared plus 40s plus 100 equals zero. And so you can get the same exact um, expression for s in doing this with respect to voltage. It works out exactly the same way. So we solve this using the quadratic formula and we get that s equals negative 20 plus or minus 10 square root of 3. And so because this is our solution, this is our s value, we know that the system is in fact overdamped. And so our general form solution, since we solve this in terms of i, is i of t equals a1 e to the, this is our s1 times t, plus a2e, this is our s2 times t. And so now what we want to do is remind ourselves of what t was at zero, and we're going to plug in zero into this expression and try to get it just in terms of a1 and a2. So if we remember back here at zero, what did we have? i at zero minus was zero amps. The current through the inductor is not going to change instantaneously. And so i of zero was in fact zero. So we go back down here and we plug in zero into this and we just get i of zero equals a1 e to the zero plus a2 e to the zero. So a1 plus a2 is equal to zero amps. Now we can't solve for a1 and a2 with just a single equation. We've got two unknowns so we need a second equation. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of i of t and with respect to t and we get a1, this is our s1 times e to the s1 of t plus a2 s2 times e to the s2 of t. And so this should actually right here, this should be a plus, in this s2, this should actually be a minus right there. So there's a small error in my solution. This should be negative 20 minus 10 square root of 2, square root of 3 times t. Um, so I apologize for that. In the solution, there is a minus right there. And so then we can find di dt at 0 plus by looking at the circuit at t equals 0 plus. And so we know at 0 plus, this is our current flowing through there. And what we're ultimately trying to find is what was the derivative of this? Well, we know the current was 0. And because the current is zero, that means there's no voltage dropped across the 10 ohm resistor. We also know that there was 20 volts dropped across the capacitor. And so all of the voltage gains and drops better sum to zero. So that means we know that the inductor current, or sorry, the inductor voltage was negative 20 volts. So we had a negative 20 volts dropped across the inductor. And so if we go back to the differential equation for our inductor voltage, V equals L di dt. And we know V at zero has to be negative 20 volts. So negative 20 volts has to equal L, 0.25 Henry, times di dt at zero plus. And so therefore di dt at zero plus is just four times negative 20, or negative 80 amps per second. So now we plug in zero for di dt, and we go back up here to this, plug in zeros for our t's, and we end up with di dt of zero plus equals a1 s1 e to the zero plus a2 s2 e to the zero. And so we get a1 times negative 20 plus 10 square root of three times t, or sorry, plus, so, let me start again, a1 times negative 20 plus 10 square root of 3 
plus a2 times negative 20 minus 10 square root of 3 equals negative 80. And so then we can solve for a1 and a2. This is where it becomes a little bit trickier because I didn't convert everything into voltages. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a matrix. And so in the top row, this is going to be the equation for a1 and a2 that I got from i at 0. So remember I had a1 plus a2 equals 0. That came in from right here. a1 plus a2 equals 0. And then in the second row, I'm going to put in my equation based on the derivative. So that is this. That's going to be my S1 times A1 plus S2 times A2 equals the derivative at 0. And when I solve for that, what I get back is A1 is negative 2.309. A2 is positive 2.309. And so now I know my current value here is going to be A1 e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t. And so I also know that my current is equal to the capacitance times the change in voltage with respect to T because the voltage here is relative to the capacitor. And so what I can do is I can take this and I can solve for V of T just by integrating this. And so I get 1 over C integral from 0 to T of I of tau d tau. And so when I go about integrating this, what I end up getting is this. I get 1 over C, and then I have to evaluate this at 0 and T. But what I do is I evaluate this, so I get it to, this ends up being my um, integral of I of T. I end up with this. This is going to be my S1 over here. This is my A1 value. Um, and then this is my S2, this is my A2, or A2 value and S2 down here. And then I evaluate this at T and at 0. And so ultimately what I end up with is V of T is approximately 21.55 E to the negative 2.68 T minus 1.55 E to the negative 37.32 T. It is actually much easier and you don't end up needing to integrate if you just convert everything over to voltage. I will post another video in a moment um, where I talk about how you can get to that step um, by converting everything over in terms of voltage. So that way you don't have to do this matrix solution, you don't have to do this integral, and it works out a lot cleaner.